What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back for the finale. We've had two weeks so far. The final week of La Vuelta is here today and go back and watch the previous episodes if you haven't because of course we sit in a very promising fourth place with Tobias Haaland Johansson, but we do have another Tobias who is second overall, another Norwegian and former Uno X rider. He's won two stages just ahead of our Tobias so far, but we are on the brink well, not quite on the brink. We're just over a minute back of the podium places for now. We have a wide open GC battle with Patrick Conrad, Pale Bilbao on the podium. This could go any manner of ways. I'm not sure what's going to happen. We were aiming for a top 10 at the beginning of the race, remember. Looks like we can do that, hopefully with a solid final week. Any more would be a bonus for us. But we do have plenty of big GC days coming up, of course, starting with stage at 15 and four mountain peaks to conquer the same. In fact, we've got five mountain peaks on stage 16, including a 22 kilometer climb up the Alto de la Cabilla. It's going to be very exciting there. Stage 17, a transitional day. Stage 18, we have a couple of ascents of the same two mountains from different sides. And I absolutely love that stage profile we have stage 19 a flat one actually with a punchy finish to Toledo and then the final GC day stage 20 which is where we will learn who is going to win the red jersey before finishing in Madrid and so the first of multiple mountain stages coming up today it's going to be a fun one and we need a good race day don't troll me Tobias in this episode please and oh yes, we definitely take this plus one day today, guys. Plenty of plus days in the team, including a massive plus five for Anton Sharmag as well. Let's try and load up the breakaway um, and try and throw some satellite riders up the road today. So sadly, we did lose our teammate, but the important thing is that Anton Sharmag is in now at this nine rider breakaway. I can already see, though, the man in form, or one of the riders in form at this Vuelta, Nelson Oliveira, is here as well. But you know what? On the second climb of the day, the breakaway literally have a 40 second lead. It's not looking good for that group at all. It's been a very fast day already, which probably suits us with our pretty strong race day conditions. And you know, I have considered a bit of a do or die move, maybe trying to bridge to Sharmag um, on this second climb of the day, but it's probably not worth it, particularly at this stage of the Vuelta Espana. But you know what? UAE Team Emirates have started to slow up a little bit. Still 100 riders in the peloton on the penultimate climb of the day now. And we have now opened up over three minutes of a lead with these six riders, but we need to stay with them ahead of the final climb because of this long valley section. Oh, but I was caught off guard and now we've had an attack by Nelson Oliveira attacking before we actually reach the Puerto del Acebo. He's attacking with the Bora rider who I think is a new gen. Paulus has dropped as well. I'm going to try and save my resources for this climb let's make sure we're well positioned which we are with Tobias also and I can already see by being in the breakaway that this climb narrows from the foot so I am trying to come right to the front with our guys Tobias well positioned again like we were on Los Machuco something I'm improving in apparently Sharmeg is trying to catch the riders at the head of the race try not to get blocked as well but Oliveira and uh, Kovacevic I'm gonna say um, are some way up the road now we've had a that so Groshart Nostora and Hugh Carthy, who hasn't performed so far at the Vuelta Espana, but we're pacing pretty hard. And uh, yeah, six k still to go. We do need to be a little steady. And this is now opening up massively this stage. We're seeing splits form 25 riders in this group. Look at Quintana. Look at Bilbao's struggle. We have Conrad, though, in red. Still looking very, very good indeed. I'm hoping to use Sharmig as a bit of a satellite rider. I can't see him winning this stage. Tiller, what a ride today on that plus three day staying in the mountains which he's not usually doing but now he can move over and sit up for the day Magnus Court Nielsen is now protecting Tobias who is getting blocked a little bit and Sharmik is only 20 seconds away from the stage at victory he's here with Groschartner and Carthy from the GC group and we have some catching up to do so we're still in the red jersey group with Patrick Conrad and I do think things are going to come back together right now and now we have 
Anton Sharmek as well to help Tobias Harland Johansson. Only 14 riders in this group. And there we go. Magnus Court Nielsen is done for the day. 1k to go right now. And the red jersey is starting to drop away. Can't see who else for the moment. But Tobias Harland Johansson is on a fantastic, fantastic day at the Vuelta Espana. But so is Felix Groschart. And what a day for him. And can we maybe challenge for this stage? Now is his time. Tobias Harland Johansson is finally going to win a Grand Tour stage, stage 15 of the Vuelta a España and Anton Sharmig was crucial in that victory. And further back, Tobias Foss is going to lose close to two minutes and even further down the road, we see Peo Bilbao who is going to lose upwards of three minutes. This is going to be crazy. Okay, okay guys, I don't know what to say because I did not expect this big a performance early on in week three. And I didn't expect as well the likes of Pale Bilbao, Patrick Conrad and Tobias Foss also crack and lose big time. Pale Bilbao today has lost three minutes and 46 seconds to Tobias. He was in the top three. He's now seventh place over four minutes back of Patrick Conrad whilst... Our man Tobias Harlan Johansson is second place at the Vuelta Espana, 1 minute 39 down on the red jersey. We couldn't, could we? And also interesting that the likes of Avran, Quintana and Hugh Carthy, probably the three riders on paper to me, who looks like they could win this Vuelta at the beginning. They were the favourites in my eyes, probably starting to perform a little late, perhaps. But Rigo is fourth, Quintana is 11th, whilst Hugh Carthy is down in 14th place. And the big mountain stages, of course, don't end there. Today we go up the 22 kilometre Alto de la Cubia. And so another plus one day for Tobias now in that beautiful looking white jersey. We've taken that from Tobias Foss's shoulder after his shocking day. I do want to throw some riders again into the breakaway, but all our breakaway candidates are right at the back of the peloton. All right, it's been so challenging, guys, but I think finally we have Anton Sharmik on his way to the breakaway today. I wanted to, to get the likes of Mogensen, Train, Tiller as well into that group. Nine riders at the head of the race, and we are on the back foot to start today because I've spent a lot of energy just trying to get riders up the road. And it hasn't even come off either because Sharmik is now back in the peloton chased down by the main group. We couldn't join the guys at the front of the race. This has been an electric start again. I think this could be the queen stage of the race so far. Look at our guys' energy. Tiller is done. Train is almost done now as well. Mogensen and Court are almost done. And this is because EF Education Nippo have had a poor race. One of the strongest teams here. They are blowing things up on the front today. And guys, we're down to 51 riders in the main peloton. That is it. That is all that is left of the elite climb left at the front of the race and that is before the Alto de la Cubia and the climb is well underway now we had a little kind of false flat entry to the climb which we have just got over here is the climb proper we need to get to the front of this group a little bit we're not best positions like we have been so far to be fair um, at the Vuelta overall and again it's EF coming to the fore and Nairo man is so offensive but I can't help thinking if he's a little more patient um, it might pay dividends all right, 10k to go in the climb. 45 riders are here. Nairo Man and those early attackers are now caught. I really could have done with Anton Sharmake, who is now 15 minutes back on the road. Trying to get into that breakaway is what cost us having him in this group. And that is because now Magnus Court Nielsen is going out the back. And 8k to go, Tobias is going to be alone. Oh, look at that. Look at that. At the head of the group, it's Patrick Comrades in the red Jersey attacking. Oh my word, he is so strong at this race right now. No one can respond immediately, and that includes us, to be fair. So we have 4k to go right now. 27 riders are here. Foss is completely done. He is, of course, third place in GC right now. So you know what? I'm going to try it, guys. I'm going to try a little, little dig with Tobias Harlan Johansson. Let's now go up to maybe 80. We've put in a little move right there. Haven't been able to drop anyone off our wheel. Let's drop this maybe to 72. Two. Looks like we're going to be dragging this entire group with us pretty much on the road. Although now we're starting to see riders drop out the back, including Pale Bilbao, who is really struggling 
in this third week. We're almost done. Let's drop it to 68. But can we get to Comrade's wheel? And of course, it is really our job to catch this man. Look at Fabio Felina. How is this man one of the strongest climbers at this race? Patrick Cronin is just up the road. We're in Felina's wheel, trying to follow. Could it be another stage victory? I don't think so today. We cannot quite follow the two strongest. Fabio Felina is unreal, but Patrick Conrad is too. He wins in red. Tobias though, a very nice third place today, better than I anticipated. But Patrick Conrad looks unstoppable. So we lose 20 seconds to Conrad, gain time on everyone else though. And we're really settling in to that second place on the leaderboard. Tobias Force is closely behind, but look at the gap to Iran. It's almost three minutes we have a buffer between second and fourth um, and staying on that podium. And I cannot help but be delighted at a podium, even though we are agonisingly close to that red jersey and what a chance this is for us. And so we do get a break from the GC battle. Nice to be honest, after a stressful few days in the mountains, we get a transitional day into Guadalajara. And you know what guys, everything just seems to be coming together for Tobias. We get a minus three day on a day that doesn't matter. It's just working out so much better than it did at the Tour de France. Taking a look quickly at the green jersey standings, it's still very close. Tobias is third, I uh, didn't realize that to be fair, but Mark Kershey only three points behind Magnus Court, so we definitely need to extend our advantage on this stage because Hershey is performing in the mountains. All right, so 12k to go. We do have the breakaway king, Thomas de Gens, up the road with Ahmed de Gens, actually, but um, I can't see either of those guys surviving today. We have our train set. Tiller is going to be important on that plus four day as Magnus Court's lead out man. And looking at the finish line, it's quite technical with a little punchy final few hundred metres, which we definitely need to be aware of now. Uh, let's put Julius Johansson up to 99. The Trek Segafredo lead out train to our right. We are battling them directly right now for position. It's Jasper Sturven, uh, the big Belgian, of course, classics specialist. But Anders Garcet and our Vikings are doing well to hold them off. Here's Ballerini. Here's Sam Bennett as well. 2K to go. Let's launch a little late, potentially, with Rasmus Teller. It does mean Mag uh, Magnus Court is out of position a little bit. We try and come through in the end. It's a strong, strong finish today. We couldn't find the gap. We went too late. And Mads Patterson takes the victory. It's fourth place. Could have been a little better, I feel, though. I mean, we can't get greedy. We've won a ton of stages compared uh, to our performance at the Tour de France. No real time gaps today, which means no changes in the GC. However, we do boost our lead in that green jersey. But swiftly, we are back into the GC battle. I love this stage. I've played it a few times on PCM, to be fair, right now. And um, it's a very interesting one because it's not a mountain top finish, although it can be super selective. And that plateau on the top of the Puerto de Cotos is going to be crucial because you have to have something in reserve after you reach the KOM mark. I mean, it had to happen at some point, right? We get the minus four day. We get the shocking, shocking day with Tobias. And this is why I was so cautious about saying we could finish on the podium or even win this race. We have the buffer. Today is about surviving because we could fall off the podium today for sure. And even out of the top 10, dare I say it. However, I did manage to get three riders into an 11-man breakaway. We have Magnus caught on a great day, 76 mounted for him. Tiller and Mogensen on good days as well. They're going to work for their teammate Magnus Court here today. Maz Pedersen, I think, in this breakaway to try and pick up points at this intermediate sprint. Let's try and drop him before that point so we can extend our lead further, if nothing else, in what is going to be a difficult stage for us. And oh man, it seems that Tobias Foss and Jumbo Visma know we're not feeling good today. They're piling the pressure on early. I mean, guys, Jumbo Visma, this is not the day I want you to do this. Please, please stop. They're not going to, of course, Magnus Court and our guys in the breakaway are about to be swept up by the peloton as well. Oh my word, this is going to be brutal. All right, and now suddenly Jumbo Visma seems to have had enough of riding on the front. The breakaway were completely caught. Let's try and form another one, I guess. I mean, guys, Tobias has been struggling to stay in this group all along, and look what we've just seen. Jonas Giri and Nairo Mann on the attack on the penultimate ascent of the day. You love to see it, aggressive racing like that. We simply cannot race like that today. It's about survival for Tobias. I mean, guys, this race is all over the road. It's completely 
completely all over the road. It's just not ideal for a minus four day, is it? I think because Nairo Quintana has attacked, we have plenty of GC teams completely unhappy with that. Magnus Court is just sat on his wheel, and I think these guys will hopefully be reeled in, and the tempo slows before the final ascent of the Puerto de Cotos. And there we go, they're caught 44 riders out here, but Trenton continues riding a little bit on the front. We need to regenerate ASAP. And here we go again. We reach the foot of the climb. 9k to go to the top. Quintana is a Gary Bilbao. They all follow Bilbao rider. We were watching closely. He's now almost six minutes down and almost four minutes behind us. So we don't need to mark him too closely. Again, we're going to set our own rhythm, probably get dropped on this climb. We need teammates in Magnus Court to do wonders for us today. But you know what? 3k to go. We're still here. 33 riders are all that are left. Magnus Court is still here as well. And Nairo Man kicks again. The man is on unreal form. He has diamonds in his legs today, apparently. And so Tiller is done. Mogensen is done as well. Only 1.4k to go to the top. I think we're just about going to be okay here. Magnus Court Nielsen, by the way, has a great chance at winning this stage which puts me in a bit of a predicament and you know what I'm going to be aggressive here I'm going to be aggressive and try and chase the stage with Magnus Court Nielsen let's get after Quintana Felina on our wheel let's see what happens here and this is of course very very risky and now Tobias Harlan Johansson is feeling the effects of this he needs to stay with this group it is so crucial he stays here Comrade is here Foss is here and Tohoik is riding so so hard for his teammate Luckily, we get to Magnus Court. Tobias just about able to latch onto his wheel. Only 15 riders are here, and this is now a good situation for us. I think Tobias can now definitely get to the end in this group, and it seems to be Felina versus Magnus Court Nielsen for this stage. Aaron Buru here as well, though, of course, he's a very good sprinter. So, Aaron Buru, Felina, and Magnus Court, if Tobias Foss isn't going to win solo, which I don't think he is right now. All right, so I'm going to try and solo this with Magnus Court. I've stuck Johansson on Patrick Conrad's wheel. He should be okay there. I'm following the front wheels for now. Fabio Felina is the man to watch. I'll take his wheel. Where is Aaron Brewer? He's a little further back, and these guys are dropping to the back of the group as well. Only three kids to go here for Magnus Court Nielsen. Let's change camera just a little bit. Here is Iran. Here is Groshana. These guys are going for the line apparently right now. Michael Storer is as well. Only 1k to go. We'll launch the sprint with Magnus Court Nielsen. Do we have it? Surely we do versus these climbers to come around and win the stage. Is Felina going to get there? No, he isn't. And Magnus Court Nielsen takes stage 18 of the Vuelta Espana. And Tobias stays at the front of the race. What a stage that was. Let's go. We get the stage at victory. Felina and Aaron Burry were the sprinters we had to watch out for. And Magnus Court is making up for not being able to win at the Tour de France here. He has won, I think, four stages now at the Vuelta just in this season whilst Tobias is still in seconds. I cannot believe we are still in second place. Look at his condition. Only 82%. Of course, he wasn't planned to go to the Vuelta. It was a last minute call up. And now he is feeling the effects of that in this third week. And it's all about damage limitation and trying to cling onto that podium. And we get one final break to Toledo before heading back to the mountains on stage 20. And could Magnus Court go back to back today? Yeah, a minus four day for Tobias. 81% fitness now. He is done. He is completely done. He's checking out of this world to a Spania. Luckily, a transitional day for him really today, despite the punchy little finish. Um, so yeah, I'm not feeling hopeful for tomorrow, but... But Magnus Court or maybe even Anton Sharmig are our best chances of victory. I know that final climb is slightly cobbled as well. And so we come to the final 6k here. I think Tobias should be okay. I'll put him to 95 uh, to hopefully survive that punchy finale. Tiller and Courts are the riders I'm focusing on today and the Scar set as well. Uh, so I'm focusing on riders who can ride cobbles because that is something we have um, in abundance in our team. But Scar set now up to 93. Let's put Tobias up to 99 and right to the front. Let's come to the front of the group entering this descent. And so Anders Garcet is giving his all. I think it's time for Rasmus Tiller. Only 2k to go to come round and hopefully position Magnus Court in the prime position. 1k to go. Let's just jump for the line with all of our guys. Patrick Conrad falls. Patrick Conrad has fallen in the red jersey. Let's cut to the front of the race. Not sure what's going on here. Magnus Court is going for stage victory. Timo Rosen is here. But are we going to come round in the end? I don't 
don't actually know. And I think it will be Timo Rosen just ahead of Magnus Court. Luckily, Tobias Johansson will finish at the front. But oh man, Patrick Conrads, is he going to lose red here? Oh no, I don't believe it. We came second on the stage. I don't really care about that because guys, I'm going to scroll down here first. Look at the time gaps we have today, which means poor Patrick Conrads is going to lose the red jersey. And Tobias Harlan Johansson is going to move into that jersey with one mountain stage left. What on earth? We have been so, so lucky here. We've fallen into the red jersey. And what a finish we have coming up to this race now. I mean, poor Conrad could only finish 158 from the stage, losing 2 minutes and 42 seconds. There were no time gaps in the first 50 riders. But, oh my word, I'm not sure if he was in the final 3K, which of course is a rule not replicated in PCM. But we have the chance to win the Vuelta Espana. We just need to finish with Patrick Conrad and Tobias Foss, I believe on the next stage. It's close though. It is really close and this could still go either way. And with our fading fitness, I'm still not feeling very hopeful. All right, this is what it's coming down to. This is what it's coming down to. An absurd amount of climbing today. And this is actually mirroring the Timo Bianchi series massively. If you guys haven't watched it, I think we held red coming into this stage with Giulio Ciccone. And on the descent of the Puerto de Pena Negra, I'm going to go with, we crashed. To hold on to the red jersey, I think we've taken uh, the bonus. No. No, 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 no. And we lost red to Garrett Thomas. So entering the stage in red again, can I this time hold on to the jersey? And there we get the sight, guys. Uno X in the red jersey. It looks absolutely stellar, despite not matching quite uh, the same uh, shade of red. Anyway, of course, we're not going to go in the breakaway today. We have to try and control the race with our guys. Plenty of riders trying to join the early breakaway. I'll try and monitor things a little bit. And you know what? We get a minus one with Tobias. Considering the circumstances, I take that all day long. So we have literally allowed a 30 rider breakaway up the road. I do not care because I have checked through. I don't believe we have a single rider from the teams of UE Team Emirates or Jumbo Visma. So that's fine. Those guys can go on to win the stage. I don't think we have anyone dangerous at all in the GC. So we are good to let these guys go on and win the stage and race for red behind. And I've actually checked through. We do have Oliveira 13 minutes down in GC, but the closest in the GC is Eddie Dunbar, 10 minutes down. So perhaps some teams will be unhappy with this move later on. I'm sure they will be, to be, uh, to be honest, because he could definitely move into the top 10. Let's just try and control things nicely and let those guys build a gap because we don't want the GC riders being enticed by a stage victory to up the rhythm. We want a slow, steady day and a nice easy way to win the red jersey. You know what? This could be a pretty mad situation because we do have seven minutes almost to the breakaway and to Eddie Zama who is provisionally moving into the top five, definitely into the top 10. And no one for now is working on the front. They're leaving it all down to us. Yep, and there we go. We now have EF Education Nippo coming to the front. They're not happy with this gap. I'm not quite sure why. I guess because Rigo Aran is fourth place in GC. He's currently losing that, I think, um, on the road to Eddie Dunbar. And EF really are controlling this stage right now. I guess Aran must be feeling pretty good as well. The gap is now five minutes, so they're not really in danger to Dunbar, particularly as this group is now uh, somewhat reduced at the front of the race. And the quick tempo is not really what I'm looking for. Oh my word, UAE Team Emirates are turning the screw right now. 88k to go, we suddenly have 63, 44 riders. We just made that split with Tobias. Really very risky riding here, being so far back in this group. Let's try and move up again here whilst trying to conserve the energy. The Alto de Grados is next and I expect we'll have even fewer riders by the top. In fact, we have 48, so a couple more. The pace did slow a little bit, but look at our guys' energy. We are feeling this day still 75k to go. Here we go then. The Puerto de Pena Negra does begin. We have Mogensen and Magnus Court just trying to control in the front. I'll even drop them to 70. If EF yeah, are happy with that, I am definitely as well. Let's make sure we're positioned to the front with Tobias. And if we can get over this climb, 
I think we have a chance, but of course it was never going to be that simple. Alberto Betiel comes to the front for EF. I'm expecting a Rigo Aran attack soon. I'm not following. I don't care for Aran attacks. I think we have enough of a buffer to him. It is, of course, Patrick Conrad and Tobias Foss I'm looking out for closely. Oh, and we're getting caught in this group. Menacing times for us as now Yumbo Visma and UAE have come to the front. Tobias needs to move up. I don't want to go above 84 though. We still have nine K to go in this climb and oh my word guys these teams are blowing it up they're giving their all we have 6k to go look at our yellow we are pretty cooked right now and I think this is where we're about to say goodbye to the chance any chance we had of the red jersey let's see if anyone attacks right here let's come to the front with Tobias or are they going to sit up let's see so Pale Bilbao launches an attack six minutes down in GC again I don't care about him we need to watch our rivals very closely we still have loads of riders here and our team is done it's down to Tobias oh and three k to go guys this is so so difficult look how thin the group is right now let's go up to 80 is that Conrad no it's Ulysses Conrad's still in this group we are pretty cooked. 2k to go. You can see Foss just ahead of us on the road as well. But we are about to crack. Oh, but look at this. Comrade and Foss seem to be struggling a little bit as well. I doubt they are as much as us. And we need to stay with them over this climb. There goes Comrade. Let's give everything to close that gap. And try and stay here with Johannesson. But Comrade seems to have a little extra energy. But I think we are just about... We are just about going to stay in the same group as Patrick Conrad. And now comes that descent I spoke about uh, with Giulio Ciccone. We fell here in red, I believe. Let's not make that same mistake again. As Tobias Foss is actually in the group behind. That is perfect for us. Up the road, we don't care. It is five riders fighting for the stage. Four minutes behind. We're in this group of six. I do believe this group with Foss and now Hessink working for him are going to close this gap. We're not working here. Patrick Conrad is actually working in this group. Interesting. He's fighting for that second place and to put Tobias Foss in difficulty. This all plays into our hands. And so Robert Hessink did close that gap. 18 riders are here. We're at the front. We are alone. Do Comrades or do Tobias Foss have anything to attack us? They have to now. Now we are completely isolated. And look at this. Playing games here. These guys trying to relay. I'm going to let these wheels go. I'm going to try every trick in the book to try and hold on to this red jersey. And again, Bilbao, Quintana, they're looking to launch an attack. I can see Comrade, I can see Foss. They're not going anywhere for the moment. And so they have gone up the road, Quintana and Bilbao. Foss is here, Comrade is here too. Let's make sure we stay here with Tobias Foss and we're going to. A little bit of descent. We need some water as well at some stage. You know what, it's too late. We crossed the 10k to go banner. We're not going to get any more water. I think we're going to be okay. You can see Nairo and Bilbao so far up the road. That's what these guys should have tried and done. Tried to escape early. Now goes Iran. Again, I do not care about Rigo Iran. We have 8k to go. We need to watch Foss and Comrade like a hawk and they're still here. Let's go, it's Felix Groshart and he is two minutes down in GC. We need to be careful and hopefully Iran is going to do that work for us here. Our energy is not great. Oh, this is so tense. You can see Comrade, you can see Foss, 6k to go. Riders from the GC group are up the road, but not the rivals. We need to watch it so carefully. A little descent, the final opportunity for Johannesson to recover. So we're getting blocked in a little. Comrade is to the front of this group. I'm going to try and follow. There goes Comrade. There goes Patrick Comrade. We need to try and react to that move. Patrick Comrade digs in and goes for the jersey in red that is on our shoulders right now. Foss is going to bring that in for us, is he? Is he really? He's third place in GC trying to battle uh, with Conrad for that position. We have 2k to go and we have literally no energy and we bring them in. That is so, so crucial. Is that Conrad's final card? We're getting blocked off. This is not the time, PCM. And so 1.3k to go. You can see Foss. You can see Conrad. I'm going to try and get into Conrad's wheel. Those guys are going to give their all. If we finish with them, we win the Vuelta, but we are done. We are done. And there goes the red jersey up the roads. There it goes. Oh, we had the minus one day. And this could be so, so close. Patrick Conrad has 37 seconds. Eddie Dunbar wins the stage. But Conrad crosses the line around 350. Let's check when we cross the line here. Johannesson is going to cross the line. Literally, 4 minutes 32. I think we lose red by the slimmest of margins. And I don't believe it. So... We know Eddie Dunbar wins the stage. You can see Patrick Conrad finished at 3.47. 
And when I press next, we will know if we have won the Vuelta at España or come second. And I think we've come second by less than 10 seconds. Let's just see what happens here. It's 11 seconds. Conrad wins the Vuelta by 11 seconds. We come second and Foss is 13 seconds back on the podium. I cannot believe this. Oh my word. Oh my word. I'm actually in shock. That was just incredible. That was so, so tense. I literally gave my all on the minus one day, the terrible condition. And what could have been guys? What could have been here? Patrick Conrad takes it. Literally, if he'd finished in this group or with Gray Shartner, I think we'd have won. We gave our absolute all. Rode our heart out on the day. And 11 seconds is what is going to separate us in the end. So it's gutting. It's absolutely gutting. I don't know what to say. I mean, we're on the podium. 11 seconds off the red jersey. What a Vuelta. Of course, one stage to go. Uh, we won't see any changes in the GC there, though. Magnus Court uh, set to win the green jersey. Felina in the KOM jersey. He deserves that. At least we do cling on to the white jersey by the slimmest of margins. Two seconds to Tobias Foss there. This has been an incredible race. And setting off together en route to Madrid next to each other, it's Johannesson and Conrad. 11 seconds between them. I cannot get over it. And here we go. Entering the capital of Spain, you can see the beautiful statue on display. And we do get our first look at the start finish straight, which will conclude the Vuelta a España. Well, this is it then, guys. 10k to go. One final loop of Madrid remaining of the Vuelta a España. And to be honest, I'm still just in utter shock from what has happened in this episode and how the uh, GC battle at this race is finished but um we have secured the green jersey at least we have secured the white jersey and we have secured a podium place so we cannot uh, not be happy with how we have done as a conti team remember or a pro team at uh, at a grand tour so let's try and finish it off though with one final victory i think magnus court's fifth this would be of the race maybe fourth i can't quite remember uh so caught up in the gc fight we need to be careful though of our red because we do have an uphill drag false flat to the line pretty much but 3k to go here Johansson looking good 99 on him right now we're in a great great position 2k to go let's go right now maybe with Tiller as well I've gone too early I'm pretty sure I've gone too early but let's not try and count it out just yet here comes Magnus Court going for the line it's not going to be victory today Fabio Felina has been in such good form it's going to be a close third place, but Mads Pedersen wins another stage of the Vuelta. To be honest, guys, I don't know what to say, but that was such a phenomenal ending to this race. I absolutely enjoyed it so much, even though we just missed out on the red jersey by the narrowest of margins in the end. Let's count our stage victories at the race. Magnus Court got two early on our first victories at Grand Tours with, of course, Uno X. We had to wait a little bit for our next one, despite a lot of seconds, a lot of third places. Uh, we got one with Tobias on stage 15, finally getting his first Grand Tour stage. Magnus Court as well um, on stage 18. We also take home the white jersey by two seconds as well as the green jersey. Fabio Felina with a phenomenal race. He wins the green jersey. Whilst Patrick Comrades, who'd have thought it guys, is a Grand Tour stage winner. And 13 seconds separates the top three riders on the podium. It's absurd. So this actually ties the second closest finish at the Vuelta of all time between first and second. The closest was six seconds in 1984. I cannot actually see um, if this is the closest podium. First to third, 13 seconds separating those two riders. If you guys know, uh, let me know in the comments below. I think this could be the closest podium at a Grand Tour of all time. And with that, guys, that rounds out the Vuelta a España. I have loved this race so, so much. If you did as well, make sure you smash that like button down below. If this video doesn't deserve a like, um, I'm pretty sure none of mine do. So uh, please do, if you enjoyed, tell me what you thought in the comments below. I think Tobias redeemed himself in the end. Of course, he had the disappointing tour. And I think we can say, although he trolled us a little bit in the final week, he redeemed himself despite just missing out on that red jersey. Hopefully we'll be back at the Vuelta to avenge this next season with Tobias. 
Anyway, guys, I'll see you in the next one.